Hi everyone, I'm Ginger Balch from In Sheep's Clothing Yarn Shop, welcoming you to another episode of Focus on Fiber. Today I'm going to show you all the different ways that you can work in the round. From double pointed needles to circular needles from 9 inch lengths up to 60 inch. It's all possible right here. Okay, so today I'm going to take out some of that mystery of knitting in the round. Um, some of the benefits of knitting in the round are, like with a hat like this, there's no seams. And no seams, to me, is more comfortable. You don't have any of that little extra bulk. Um, another thing is, too, with socks, like right here, no seams. I can't think of anything more uncomfortable than having a seam going down the back of my, my leg or against my ankle. So there's different ways of accomplishing knitting in the round. And one of the oldest ways and the earliest ways would have been using double pointed needles. And that's what these little short sticks are with points at both ends, hence double pointed needles. Now what you would do is, so anyway, the double pointed, I just want to explain that. And then you have things like the circular needles. So you can see I already have some stitches cast on here with the circular needles. Now this little gadget here is very, very handy if you want to, because what happens sometimes is with your double pointed needles and even with your circular needles, the sizes wear off. So if you are trying to figure out you want to work with four double pointed needles, you want to make sure they're all the same size. So what you would simply do is put them through one of the, ho the holes in this gauge and figure out, okay, it won't go through that one. So I have a size, whoops, a size six double pointed needle right here. And the same thing with your, with your circulars. You would just pop them in here and figure out which one, like I know this should be a size nine and it is, the size nine needle. So this is invaluable when it comes to working with circular needles or double pointed needles. And it's called an, um, uh, just a needle gauge. Now, to get started um, with working with your double pointed needles, um, what you're going to do is you need to um, cast on your stitches. I find the easiest way to start doing this is you do your slip knot, and I'll just cast on a few stitches. I'm going to cast them onto um, all the stitches onto one double pointed needle. So I'll just put on a bunch of stitches. And just in case you're wondering, this is called the long tail cast on because I'm working with two tails of uh, two tails of my yarn. There's many different ways of casting on. This is kind of one of my go-to go-to methods. Now the reason that you would want to be working with double pointeds as opposed to a circular needle most times would be because you have only so many stitches to work with. And if you only have say 20 stitches, you're not going to be able to get those stitches on and around and work with those on too long of a circular needle. So that's where the double point comes in because you can divvy up as few as, not that I'd want to do this, but three stitches or, or six stitches onto a, onto a double pointed needle and be able to work in the round. So now that I have these on here, and actually let me just count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm going to put two more on just so 18, just so we can divvy them up evenly onto three needles. Because usually what you're going to do is you are going to have your needles, you have your stitches on three needles and then knit with a fourth. So what we do is I'm going to knit across, so I said 18, so that's going to be six stitches. So I'm going to knit six stitches. Oops. Two. Six. And if this is the first time that you're joining me, don't get freaked out that I'm working with yarn in my left hand. I knit continental. Um, you can also knit your style of knitting, if you knit American or European um, English, by wrapping your yarn around your needle this way. I can do it. It's just not as comfortable for me. It's like uh, knitting, uh, it's like speaking a second language, kind of. 
but there's, there we go. So now I'm knitting with my right hand, just throwing my yarn instead. So there's four, five, and six. And just because I'm going, so what's happening is now I'm, I'm adding another needle because I want to divvy these up onto three needles. So now I'm going to back to my continental method and I'm going to knit across these stitches. And it's, I know that it's going to start looking very worrisome to have all these needles in play. So I'll set this fourth one down. So now what's happening is I have my stitches divvied up on three needles. And what's really, really important at this part is that you want to make sure that you don't have them all twisted up. So here's my yarn coming from this side so I can knit, and there's my tail. So what I'm going to do now at this point is just pick up my needles in this way. And that very first stitch that I'm going to knit with my fourth needle is going to connect me in the round. Just pick up, knit that stitch, and there I go. I am now connected in the round. So now I'm just going to use, using my fourth needle, I'm going to knit across this needle. And what happens is when you get to the end, that very last stitch, it frees up this needle. So you're always just going back and f going round and round, really. And, I, and what I find easier is I push my needle down and then I just start knitting. And the more that you have on your, um, the more that you've worked, the easier it becomes. It's going to feel very, um, uh, not very comfortable when you first get started. You're going to feel like you're a little out of control and this is crazy working with all these needles. And actually, because some people do feel like this is crazy working with all these needles, that's why they have circular needles, which we are going to get to next. But having learned on double pointed needles, I just, I, li I like them. Um, although, if I have a choice of, if I, if I have just a very few stitches, this is definitely going to be my choice of working. Um, working. But you can see here now, I'm getting a little tube just working on those three needles. And I can just work round and round and round and eventually I would get something like this with no seams. So those are double pointed needles. Now say that I could certainly do a hat, a sleeve on a sweater with this, but there's easier ways to do that. So we're just going to set that one aside and done with double pointed needles. Okay, so now circular needles. Say that we want to do this baby hat. There's different lengths of circular needles. So what I did was I cast on, and I just have to for a, mention, a, a moment mention this yarn. I think this is the most adorable yarn. All you have to do is just knit it and it creates the, the pattern all by itself. And this is the yarn right here. This one I think makes like little rosebuds. I think it's adorable. And then that, this one is this color here. And I figured, well, let me use the blue for a demonstration today because I have to make a blue hat, of course. But this is another one that will do the same patterning just in this color. So getting back to the, the baby hat. Now, this, these were done with 72 stitches. And 72 stitches just makes it on a 16-inch needle. Now, these are... These are typically, typically your smaller circular needles, but you can go down to as small as a nine inch, and that's from tip to tip, or this one here is a 12 inch tip to tip. So I put on 72 stitches, and I know that I will, I'll have to um, kind of push it out just a little bit um, for this to meet and to join it and make it into a round. Uh, the 9 inch will be just fine too, but the 12 inch will just make it. 16 inch is just too long. So I have a little secret of what you can do in case you don't have a really short little needle. What you can do is you can take your 16 inch needle, okay, cast on your 72 stitches. And then what you do is just work two rows back and forth. Don't join it yet. 
You have to join your little tail anyway, so a couple more rows isn't going to make a big difference. So back and forth, and what happens is that, that stretches out just enough that then you can join your needle and that these hats were done on a 16, even though right now I'm going to use a 12 inch. So I'm going to show you how to join with a circular needle after you've cast on. So what the easiest thing to do is to lay your circular needle down and you want to make sure that your cast on is all nice and straight and that it's not twisted. So now I'll take my, two, my, my needles, I'll take my yarn just like I did with the double pointed needle and what I'm going to do is just by knitting into that very first stitch, I'm joined. There I go. Now we now have a circle and we will now be knitting in the round. So just by doing this all the way around now, I will be starting this cap with no seam. And I'm just, I'm joined. And it's very easy. So then what you want to do is just push your, your stitches down so that you're not stretching it out like crazy. But that's it. That's all there is to it. But the most important key part is to not twist that beginning round. Um, otherwise you'll end up with a figure eight and there's no going back from that. Then you have to take it out and start again and make sure it's not twisted. And that's another, another reason too, if I have a lot of stitches and maybe it's much easier for the, uh, your stitches to get twisted at that point, is sometimes if you do work back and forth just two rows, then you have something, you know, something significant for you to lay down and say, okay, I'm positive it's not twisted now. Uh, because I have done that on a long, longer needle, cast on my stitches, thought for sure, I'm good, I'm not twisted, get around a round or two and then realize, yes, I am twisted and then have to take it out. And that always stinks. So anyway, so there's the beginning of my new hat. So then tonight I will go home, I will finish knitting this, and then I'm going, I'm going to have a cute little blue sample of this hat. I just think those are adorable. So um, I also want to mention so that we have our circular needles in different sizes. And so this is 16 inch, and then we have our 24, which we, will, we are going to um, do something very interesting with two circular needles. So those are our two circular needles here. Um, you can also get these really terrific kits or just get them singularly where they're just the tips. And then what you do is you have the cords that you just twist the cords on and then there's a little pin that tightens them up. So then you can change them back and forth. So that's very handy for if you want to have circular needles but you don't want to have like I, I have so many of these that they all get all twisted and everything. So you can have a nice neat little kit like this and still have all the circular needles that you would possibly want. And they come in all different size cords and different lengths of tips. And if you like metals, wood, bamboo, they, they're all available. So keep your eyes open for those. Now this here is a sample of a sock of what we're going to be getting to next is this sock was done on two circular needles. And I know you're looking at this and saying, why? This is crazy. And I have to admit, <laughs> I have kind of not been a, uh, ready to jump on the bandwagon with two circular needles. Not when I'm happy with either the short little 16 inch or my double points. Love my double points. But teaching knitting, you need to know all this stuff. And I have to admit that once I started, started it, I said, you know, this really does work out very well. It gives you a nice, I mean, I have no, no spaces in my knit, in my ribbing here. Um, that's another reason a lot of people like, if they don't like the double pointed needles, but um, sometimes what happens when you're working with double pointed needles like these, as you're working from corner to corner, you have to give it a little tug to make sure that it stays snug. But sometimes some people have a problem with that and they'll get these ridges where the needles are crossing and they just get a, a kind of an ugly looking ridge no matter what they do. So this totally gets rid of any ridges that you might have. And you can see right here 
So I did this in the round with the two circular needles and then what I just did was I dropped one of the needles and I had to do my heel flap so I'm just worked back and forth on my circular needle. Oh, and that's that's one other thing too that you can do with circular needles is if you're not and I'm coming off very opinionated here, but if you're not a big fan of like the long straight needles, once upon a time that's what a lot of people use, the 14 inch straight needles. Well, I mean they're fine if you've got lots of room and you're knitting away, but say that you're traveling and you've got a tight little seat like in an airplane, that's not going to work. So you can also take these needles and just work back and forth and use it like one, instead of having two, two straight needles, you have one needle with two points at each end. So you can just do that and work back and forth on it. Um, and it takes very little room. Um, I personally like doing it this way too because it's less stress on your elbows and your wrists because you can just set everything on the table and not have those big needles hanging out, bobbing away. And the, the more that you knit, the heavier it gets. So these work great. And if you're doing afghans, these come in all different lengths. You can go up to like 60 inches. Um, and that's where these come in handy too, is you can get whatever length that you want. So you can do an afghan all in one piece instead of having to make even strips or pieces that you have to put together. So if you want to do it and not have any finishing after, circular, circular needles are a really great way to go with that as well. Um, okay, so let's see, I think we covered everything with that. So now we're going to get to the really exciting thing of working with two circular needles in the round. So I'm going to take, first what you need to do is you, they have to be the same size needles. Some people like to to make sure that they're working um, on the right needles. We'll have one, say a bamboo needle and maybe one a, uh, a wood needle. The only thing is sometimes I find I work differently on different needles. So if one's a metal and one's a bamboo it probably won't be a big difference that you're going to see with a sock, but I kind of like to keep them the same. But for just beginning to learn, that might be something handy for you to do, is one needle with one, one uh, wood and one with another metal or something, just to keep track of what you're going up doing. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to take this yarn, and actually this kind of shows you right here of what's going to happen. Now these are on two 16 inch needles just to hold my stitches, but you can see this little tube with these two needles. And I know it just seems like, wow, that's really crazy, but it does work. So that's what that looks like. So I'm take my yarn and get ourselves separated here. Now what you want to do, just give myself some room here so I can work. Okay. So I'm going to take one of my needles and I'm going to cast on some stitches. And in this case, I'm going to put on, I want to work on 24 stitches, okay? But I'm going to put on 25 and I'll explain what I'll do with that extra stitch later. So here's my slip knot and I'm going to put on the 25. Actually, that might not be enough yarn. Okay, and let's just make sure that we do have the 25, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Okay, so let's take one of those off. Okay, so now we have all our stitches that we're going to deal with. Um, say we were going to do a sock or something like that. And that's another reason why we're using the two circulars. Um, so I have the two here. Uh, I have the um, stitches cast on. So now what I'm going to do is take my second needle and I'm going to slip half the stitches 
onto the second needle. And I have that extra stitch, so I want to actually put that extra stitch on too. So I'll have 13 on this needle. And I'm doing it purl wise, slipping the stitches as if, as if I was going to purl. Thirteen. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold them over like that. Okay, so you see I connected right here at the beginning of my needles. Well, and my working yarn is over here at the other end. Can't get there from here as far as knitting is concerned. So what I'd have to do then, and we make sure that my stitches are all going the same direction, is we're going to take both those sets of stitches and we're going to slide them down the other end of the needles like this. Turn my work around and then I'm just making sure that my stitches aren't twisted, that all my stitches are going the same, the bumps of my cast on are all going the same direction and you can see that I'm joined here on the left end of my needles and I have my 13 stitches here so what I'm going to do is move one of those stitches over to the other needle just going to take it and move it over to the back needle there we go okay and now my working yarn is up here let's get my tail out of the way tails here. Let's get that out of the way. So we're ready to knit now but the thing that we have to pay attention to is when you're knitting you want to make sure that you're not um, mixing your needles up. So if I'm knitting with the back needle I want to make sure I'm knitting the whole back needle. I don't want to be catching the front needle. So I'm taking my back needle and now because I had that extra stitch, I'm going to knit those, oh, and that's the other key thing. This needle's in my way to go and knit. So what I'm going to do is just slide it out of the way. And now, nice and easy, whoops, I want to knit those two stitches together. There we go. And now I'm just going to knit across this, it's going to be around. I'm going to knit to the end of this needle like that. This to me it just seems very magical because it doesn't seem like it should make any sense and that it should even work. Okay so now that's releasing my needle. I'm going to pull that needle all the way back, turn my work and push the other needle back the one that's now in the back and I'm going to start again making sure I'm using the back needle and I'm going to use the other back needle so these two are hanging out of my way okay and now I'm just going to start knitting this side of the round and I'm just going to keep doing this round and round kind of back and forth round and round it's I'm not sure you can say round and round I mean you were working round and round but your needles keep going kind of back and forth like that. So when I get to the end, I'm just going to repeat exactly the same thing. And you can see how I'm joined at both ends here. So now I'm going to push this needle out of the way because I'm done with it. Turn and push the new working needle in place. Make sure I catch that. I've done this the wrong way and caught the wrong needle and before you know it you've knit off the wrong needle and you're on one needle only. So let's see, whoops, caught the tail. There we go. And now I'm going to start knitting around here. But you can see now I'm starting to get a tube. And you can do this in knitting, you can do 
as I did with the sock here and ribbing. Any kind of stitch combination that you want to, you can do with the two circular needles. And if you really want to be totally amazed, besides knitting on two circular needles, you can also do what I'm just doing right now. See, there's my tube. Okay, it's joined. Um, but you can actually do this with a single 60 inch needle. But I'm going to save that for another day. But anyway, this is just to show you what you could do when you want to work and knit in the round. Well, I'm sure, I sure hope that you enjoy spending your time with me again today. And hopefully you will be excited to try out a new way to work in the round. Thank you again. And don't forget that it's always important to keep a focus on fiber. See you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.